June and January, that's what I say. If you ask me, I think it's because of those atom bombs. Yeah? Yes. They've done some cockeyed things in the world. I think they've knocked the south of the equator. Each. 
They'd be rolled an average distance of more than 500 feet by a blast 1,000 feet away. Like dice. At Hiroshima, little evidence of direct blast effect on people was found. Man, puny and frail, yet amazingly resilient, can take blast pressures better than the big buildings he puts up. A shockwave with a peak of three pounds pressure per square inch is considered sufficient to knock down most houses. But it takes a peak blast of some 50 times this pressure to kill a person in the open. Indirect rather than direct blast effects contribute largely to the casualties caused by an atomic burst. Ironically, the things men make for better, safer living become accessories to slaughter. Blast knocks their homes down on them, bludgeons them with falling objects and flying debris, burns them with fires from broken heating apparatus, drives broken glass at them. Zones denoting varying degrees of danger from ground zero are hard to circumscribe with the compass. Many factors add to the eccentricity of the circles. Weather and topography, obstacles which cause the blast to ricochet, indirect effects which hinge on the vulnerability of structure, all these scallop the shock front. And heat, second of the explosion's three destructive agents, burns its way into the picture. The heat rays produced by an atomic burst are most intense during the first few seconds following the detonation. They don't last long. Long enough, though, flash heat from the Nagasaki bomb was sure death to unshielded persons out to eight-tenths of a mile or 1,400 yards from ground zero. It burned the exposed parts of the bodies of those out in the open within 4,000 yards or more than two miles. It charged telephone poles more than two miles away. Flash heat leaves a dramatic sketch of its searing course. Using as its patterns monuments, bridges, and men. Clothing offers considerable flash burn protection to persons beyond the 1,000 yard radius, and light colored garments which reflect heat are better than dark, which absorb them. Many dark-colored birds are grounded through the fingering of their wing Their lighter and luckier cousins remain airborne. The flash from a burst may cause temporary blindness to those unprepared for it. Its rays can do strange things to the skin. They can stain up a walnut hue or just the reverse. The lethal radius of flash heat is affected by atmospheric conditions and topography. Fog reduces it. So does rain. Heat radiations take a straight course. They can't go through hills or turn corners. Yet heat plus blast accounted for about 85% of the casualties at Hiroshima and Nagasaki. While 15% was charged to nuclear radiation, the least understood and most feared property of an atomic explosion. The chain reaction phase of an explosion, that prelude lasting less than a millionth of a second, is followed by a bombardment of the atmosphere around the bomb by gamma rays. Rays of great range, speed, and penetrating power, capable of killing all exposed persons within a radius of 1,200 yards. Their fellow travelers are neutrons, particles having definite mass. They have shorter range than gamma rays, coming from the same source. Their lethal range is estimated at slightly less than 800 yards. having thrown its nuclear haymaker, continues the assault of gamma rays and neutrons during the growth of the ball of fire formed after the explosion. But the ball rises, carrying them into the stratosphere, as well as the cargo of radioactive material consisting of fission fragments and unconsumed parts of bomb material. And in about two minutes, the area under the ball is safe. 
Under normal conditions with an air burst, the dispersal and fallout of the radioactive stuff is not hazardous. We got movies of a goat that went right on eating during a bikini blast and lived to a healthy, naturally ripe, old age. Another bikini veteran, a pig, lived at the Washington, D.C. Zoo for years following its atomic ordeal. Long after its stay-at-home contemporaries had become pork sausage and ham hot. Radiations affect the human body in a definite, orderly way. Gamma rays penetrate the skin, invading vital organs. Alpha and beta emitters can enter the body only through breathing and swallowing radioactive matter. This matter can also go through breaks in the skin. Beta can damage the skin itself. These three radiations all ionize the atoms of the living cell and can cause its death. The ensuing sickness, if not directly fatal, may weaken victims so they succumb to other ailments they might ordinarily resist. Radiations are a measurable force, just as weight is recorded in pounds and electricity in watts. Radiations are reckoned in Rentgens. An intensity of 10 Rentgens per hour of gamma radiation, as shown on the dial of a radiation detection instrument, is a harmless amount if the exposure isn't prolonged. The maximum exposure permitted persons working industrially with radioactive materials is 3 tenths of a Rentgen per week. This allows a large safety cushion. Since an exposure of more than 150 Rentgens may be required to produce symptoms of sickness, and several times this amount to cause death. The accepted industrial exposure of three-tenths Rentgen per week, therefore, would be subject to upward revision in time of emergency. The radioactivity of a bombed area is determined by monitors using detection devices and by specially trained radiological defense personnel who can determine when it can be safely entered. They are guided in their estimates by their knowledge of the radioactive material's half-life, which is the time required for 50% of it to decay or complete its radiation. Hello. There are other kinds of atomic bursts which are dangerous Hello. distributors of radioactive matter. This hot stuff emits gamma rays. Hello plus beta particles, which are slower and have less range and penetrating power, and alpha particles, larger and heavier than beta, but slower, shorter in range, weaker in penetration. Nuclear radiations are hazards, but they aren't the mysterious, inescapable, irresistible, sure death forces that many people suspect them to be. So, in summary, a high atomic explosion, which experience indicates is the most effective for all-around destructiveness, produces great blast, heat, and nuclear radiation. Discounting the probability of any abnormal, serious fallout of radioactive matter, ground contamination through lingering radiation would be insignificant. She didn't say she said It was safe to go into Hiroshima and Nagasaki immediately after they were bombed. She kept saying that. I had an idea it would be suicide. No, but there are other types of atomic explosions that are different, that have their own contrasting behavior pattern. One of them is the underwater detonation, like the uh, Baker test. Pictures of the M41. It lifted millions of tons of water. The head of the fountain rose a mile high. We call them one half mile thick. As the column began to settle, a base surge formed which sped outward to a radius of one and one half miles, or about 2,500 yards. An underwater blast is pretty and potent. The blast surge, and we're still discussing the bomb equivalent to 20,000 tons of TNT as our model, generates terrific submarine pressure. These are all ships within 600 yards. It creates sheer waves, which can seriously damage vessels within a radius of 700 yards. The aerial shock wave is only about one fourth as powerful as that of a high air wave, but still capable of causing damage out to six tenths of a mile, or more than 1,000 yards. The heat effects of an underwater explosion are negligible.
but radioactively, it has a particularly poisonous personality. The radioactive material, which is taken up and out of play in a high aerial burst, is trapped by the water, and the water is blown over the target area. The base surge is the chief carrier, moving with the wind and dropping its cargo as it gradually breaks up. Within one to seven minutes after the Baker blast, radioactive water was deposited on all but nine of the target ships, producing dosages that would have been lethal to all exposed personnel. Some contamination was spread under the surface, through the water itself. However, two hours after the explosion, ship movements could be resumed on an emergency basis. A month later, men were getting along swimmingly in the bomb lagoon. The water in the Bikini Baker bomb area was almost 200 feet deep, ample for development of the base surge. But experts are divided as to whether the water depths of most important ports are sufficient to allow the surge to materialize. Theoretical, too, are the effects of an underground explosion of an atomic bomb. A large crater would be formed. The resulting earth shock would produce heavy damage surrounding the crater. Minor damage would extend out for a mile. The destructive radius of the above ground blast wave might be one half to two thirds that of an air burst. Considerable heat and prompt nuclear radiation might be cut off. There is the possibility, however, that much radioactive material would be trapped and distributed in the manner of an underwater explosion. The destructiveness of the ground contact force is also a subject for scientific speculation. Speculation guided, however, by results of near ground tests. Such a burst, it's believed, would have a smaller shock radius than that of a high aerial explosion wherein the shock bounces off the ground and overtakes the original waves, reinforcing them to produce a single, super-strong pressure front. In near ground, and presumably contact bursts, this extra wallop might not form because much of the shock energy might be absorbed by the Earth. It would be reasonable to expect great heat from a contact burst, as well as much prompt nuclear radiation. The ground might be subjected to the same sort of blood treatment the Baker bomb gave the water, with consequent contamination of the target area. A base surge of earth could occur. An atomic bomb in any form is the deadliest weapon ever put together, and the working knowledge of what it can do is of vital importance to all to the people against whom it might be used, and to those who use it as in peacetime experiments. Two bombs were smoothly and successfully tested at Bikini because the men involved knew what they were handling. Just as successful was Operation Sandstorm then in Weehawk, where a trio of weapons was set off. But if they hadn't had that know-how, it could have been the old ball game. One.